Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So if you remember, this is my um, new work in progress Wednesday series and we are just on series one and that is where I walk through a Dresden quilt. It's kind of an antique inspired series this time around. And we are now on episode four where we are going to be attaching the plates that we made, the Dresden plates and the circle to our background. So first we're going to be just kind of basting them in place and then we will be doing the stitches to attach them. So let's get started. Now the first thing that we're going to do before we even explore all the methods that we can use to attach our Dresden circle and our center circle all together to um, to applique, we're going to want to find the center. So I think the easiest way is to fold, um, fold and starch them so that they get nice creases. Um, you could measure if you want to, but um, I just think this is the easiest way. <laughs> so I don't have to break out rulers. So we're just gonna fold in half twice to find the center. And then voila, we all know where the center is. So now that we found the center there, we can line up our points. And that will help us ensure that everything is centered. So there we go. And then we could just put the center on. I'll probably eyeball it. Um, you could do the same and fold and you know, things like that. But I think centering this will be enough in my opinion. Um, so now that we found the center, we would do that on all of our background squares and then line up points. And um, you could kind of turn it to see how you think it's best. You don't need to have, you know, just settle on the same one. You might want your prominent colors facing a certain direction, um, you know, however you wanted to do it. So um, now that we found the center, I'm gonna show you the different ways that I am going to um, show you that you could explore basting. I want to say basting because I don't applique a lot, um, you know, basting this onto the background. So one of the simple ways is just using pins, right? You could um, add a few pins in to hold everything in place when you go to applique, whether you're going to do it on the machine or by hand. Um, I'm going to do it by hand, but you could just put some pins in and hold everything in place that way. And then you would do the same. You could either um, applique this in place first and then do the center circle. Um, maybe you would wanna do some quick stitches around here and then put your center circle on. They'll kind of be hidden and then you can do some you know, nice finishing stitches on the circle to hold everything in place. Um, you know, Just have a quick base stitch and then this will hide everything. Um, my biggest thing with using pins is I know for me, if I use pins, I will, um, I will constantly get my thread hooked around the head of the needle and the point of the needle. I might poke myself. You could remedy that by putting in, um, safety pins. You won't get poked, but you still might, your thread still might get, you know, wrapped around the needle. Um, so another thing you could do, and I see a lot of people doing, is just traditional, you know, washable school glue stick. Um, it's very cost effective, especially during back to school or directly after back to school. They have a lot of sales. You can get a lot of it at a good price. There are also um, specific to fabric glue sticks that you could use. I think they're a little bit pricier. Um, but some people are going to feel more comfortable using something that is designated as for fabric. Uh, I feel like because this is going to be behind all your fabric, um, you know, I, I don't think you're going to have an issue and it is washable. So I think it's a, I think it's a good alternative. I don't mind using it. Um, so there's that. And then 
You could also use a fusible web. Um, for me, I, I like to try to use stuff a lot that I know I already have on hand. Um, I always have Elmer's glue sticks because my kids, you know, would use them. We homeschool, we always have different glues around. Um, and anything you have to buy special, you're just adding on more cost. Uh, but this does work really well. And if you have the funds and you don't mind spending the funds, um, it's a really nice piece to use because not only does it add some more sturdiness to, sturdiness to what you are working on, um, you can cut it directly to size or really close to size so that you don't have to worry about anything shifting around. So that is a good, um, you know, I think that's a good way to go as well. And then you also have uh, like basting spray. Um, I use this for quilts from time to time, usually smaller projects and not big, big projects, but, um, it works really well for holding things in place. The one thing I'll say about this is, uh, it's hard to use indoors over long periods because it does have a strong scent to it. Um, you know, it's not going to smell good. It's honestly best if you can use it outside or open a window to use it. Uh, I live in Texas and it's already scorching hot here. So going outside does not feel ideal to me. And so what I did was I looked up to see if there's a way to make it myself. Um, and so I did make my own basting spray. It works pretty well. The main difference that I would say is that, uh, you have to wait for this to dry for it to really hold onto your fabric. So you'd want to go through and do all yours and maybe uh, wait a while, wait until you see it's dry and then you can use it. So if you're wanting to work quickly through this um, and you don't want to take the time to let uh, something dry, this may not be the best way to go, but I will say uh, it does rid the idea of um, the strong scent and the strong, strong chemicals. So, that is a lot of information I know. One thing I wanna say is if you are going to use uh, something like this, you are going to want to have a surface that uh, that you're not gonna worry about this spraying over onto. So either have something you can lay out, a bunch of newspapers, some parchment papers, um, you know, anything like that that you could spray on. And don't spray onto your background. You want, you'd want to have this flipped over onto your surface, spray it, and then place it onto your background, get it lined up and, and attach it down. Um, I would let, I, you know, you could use it right away. You're going to feel it sticking on pretty well. Uh, but I think it works best if you let it dry for just a few minutes and then press it to make sure you have all your wrinkles out. And I feel like any of these, um, adhesive sprays work better when you iron them. It feel like it kind of sets it a little bit. So um, what I am going to do, because this is already a project that um, that is taking longer than I normally take on quilt projects because I'm working through it so carefully. And not that I don't on other times, but a lot of times I use projects that I can sew kind of mindlessly and work on it. And this has, has taken a lot of my attention and I don't normally applique uh, to kind of move it along. Instead of doing the basting stitch around here, which is something that I think would help a lot, I'm going to go ahead and attach both on um, and do it all at once. So I think I am going to applique with a blanket stitch. I think it looks really beautiful. I've gone back and forth on the idea because um, I am going to hand quilt this and I'm wondering if the blanket stitches will stand out too much against my quilting that I do later. But I actually think I'm overthinking it a little bit. I think that having the different stitches will just help add to um, the more vintage look to it because there's two different types of stitching going on here, right? There's going to be the applique and then there's going to be the quilting, which are two very different things. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. This is a new project, a new idea, but I think that's how it's, how it's going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, show each method for, um, basting, 
I keep saying basting, but it's more of like attaching my applique on to the background to applique it. Um, I'm going to show each method and um, aside from the pinning, because that's not, I'm not going to use that at all. Um, pitting, pretty self-explanatory, just pin everything down if that's what you want to use. Um, but uh, I don't want to keep poking myself and I don't want to get frustrated with my thread catching onto it. So I'm going to show the um, store-bought adhesive, the one I made, the washable glue, and the steam -a seam I will show each one of those. And what I'll do is let them set overnight and I will um, make sure I keep them all separate so we know how they were attached and then we can look and see which one seems to hold up the best and may work the best for um, when I applique. Because one might not hold as firmly, it might get frustrating when I sit to applique. And I think that's always good to know, right? So let's work through each of these methods. So I let these sit for some time and we're going to take a look and see how they are holding up. Now, if you remember, I did try and do some with the homemade basting spray, but it was just not working on this. It's really interesting because it does seem to stick pretty well when using batting like for a quilt, but it did not want to adhere in this application, unfortunately. So let's take a look first at the glue stick. And I think it holds pretty well. Um, I think it would hold up for doing the stitching. I'll let you know um, after I sit down and do my stitches on it, um, I'll update, but I think it holds pretty well for right now and would probably be 
a very um, cost effective way to attach all the pieces aside from using pins if you're comfortable doing that. Okay, so then we have the temporary adhesive, of the 505 that I used. And I think this one was my favorite because the way you sprayed it, it really got to the edges really well. And it was really quick to do. Um, you sprayed it really quick and attached it. And before it dries, you could move it around fairly easily if you needed to. Um, it wasn't too hard to, but your hands do, of course, get really sticky. And that's the same with the glue stick, though. So um, I really like how it attached. I think this one will probably hold up the best, but I'll definitely update and let you know. So then we have the fusible web. Um, if you take the time and really cut it to size, uh, I think it will hold really well. Everything held in place. Um, I didn't go all the way to edge on all the points because I was lazy and honestly didn't want to have to cut that perfectly for all of them. Otherwise, it holds up really well. Um, I think this one, if, especially if you're going to uh, be very detailed and catch everything, would probably end up costing you the most, but it holds up really well and I think would work really well as, as well because it's not a really thick adhesive, so I don't think it would be much different than any of the other ones that I tried. Um, also keep in mind you'll end up with little pieces like this when you cut everything out, but you could just cut tiny pieces and just um, adhere around the points to hold with these little scraps. And if you use it for a lot of other projects and you have these scraps, you could do that as well. So those are the three um, different ways that I held all this together. Again, pens is another option. You could get um, fabric glue sticks. There's a lot of things that you could use. These are just three um, just to show you. So here is what I'm going to be using to do the blanket stitch. Um, this is some Orifil thread. It is, um, I think it is, was that 12? There you go. But here is um, the number if you want to use it. And uh, it's a cream. I typically almost always use cream, gray, white, or black, depending. Black, of course, if I'm using... Um, black fabric, but I usually don't stray too much to other colors because I get a lot a little uncomfortable there. So usually, yeah, green or um, greens, uh, cream, beige, um, white, gray a lot. So I'm going with the cream here because it blends in really well with the background. And since there's so many colors to hear through here, matching them up just probably isn't going to happen. Um, I went ahead and did one just to see how it would look and this was on the uh, using the 505 adhesive spray because I did all the rest of them after I did the three and the one with the homemade spray that didn't work. Um, I went ahead and did them all with the 505 just because it was quick and holding up pretty well it seemed like. so. Um, here is one done. Like I said, I'm just going to do the blanket stitch. In the um, description, I will put links to a few videos that I thought were really helpful on um, doing different stitches. I will show how to do the blanket stitch here, but if you need a more in-depth tutorial, I'll put links to some of the videos that I think were really helpful. So... I'm gonna get started and work through all these. One done, 11 to go. Uh, I can't, I didn't really time to see how long this took me to do. I have not hand stitched in a long time, so it probably took me longer than it should have, uh, but it did take, it, take a bit of time. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you how to do the blanket stitch and then I'll work through all these and We'll meet back up in probably a day to several hours. <laughs> okay, so here is my little quick tutorial on the blanket stitch. I will put some more in-depth um, uh, videos in the description that I found helpful. So what we're going to do first is bring the needle up right at the edge of the applique that we're going to be putting the blanket stitch on. And 
and then we will pull it through and I have a little knot on the back there. So once we do that, we're going to come in the length that you want your stitch to be. Um, I'm gonna try to match my other ones. I'm not the best at, at uh, hand stitching, but you know what? Practice makes perfect. So you're gonna kinda wanna make that string come up and away a little bit. And once you go in, you're gonna pop your needle back up at the edge of the applique that you're doing. So kind of pop your needle back up and you wanna stay on top of that thread that you have hanging out up there. Okay, so then pull it through and see how you kinda, of, you're on the other side of that stitch and that's gonna make that beautiful like running stitch along the edge of your applique. So leave that thread hanging out up there and then go to your next stitch over and um, well, you're gonna wanna try to match up the stitch length as the best you can. And then once your ne you feel your needle go through, pop it up, up there right by the edge of your applique. Okay, and then make sure you're going on top of that thread that it's hanging out behind your needle and pull through. And see, that's how it's gonna get caught on those if you're holding everything together with needles, it could get caught there. And then there you go. See, you're following along with that thread right along the edge of the applique. And the reason I like it is because it really gives a nice finished look to your piece. Um, but if you don't like the look at, of those threads, there's a lot of other stitches that you could do. And then you're just going to keep on doing that around your piece. Um, the only difference would be is how you want it to look at, you know, points and things like that, like on the uh, petals of the of the Dresden circle. Um, I I just kind of went around it carefully in a lot of places. Kind of did a little stitch at the end and went around and followed around but you could do I tried doing it once or twice on this one and I didn't like the look as much uh, let me see if I can find it where you join everything at one point I'll put a tutorial down there that shows that but I really liked the way it looked better just doing a little stitch at the end which I started doing um, in some spots so otherwise everything's the same it'll just be a little bit different around how you get around the point so kind of hold that thread up find where you want to sink down under the applique and then come back up right away at the edge of it pull your needle through and make sure you're on the other side of your thread so that you can carry along your stitch and if this is new to you like it is me and you don't have the th the thread behind like you're supposed to like you're concentrating and you're trying to get your st stitches perfect and you come up and you pull through and then oh no you realized you didn't catch that thread just hop under it I'm hitting stuff to the side because I'm pulling this so far and you can easily fix it. I mean, you're, you'd need to fix it right away. You can't go a few stitches down and then realize that you didn't fix it, but it's easy to fix. So don't, don't fret about that. But the easiest thing to do is make sure it's laying in your needles on top of it every time. So there we go. Just keep doing that and get your million stitches going. <laughs> So um, I'm going to get a few of these done. We'll take a look at them and uh, hopefully I can get a bunch done this week. But if not, I'll show you next Wednesday uh, what all I've done on this and then we'll work on the, um, the sashing. I do have an idea for it and let's see. Do you want to see it now? Maybe you want to see it now. Let me grab what I've been working on. So it's scraps 
and this obviously isn't the colors that I'm going to be using and I use different colors of background but if you imagine the whole background's the same color uh, this is what I'm going to be doing for the sashing so the sashing would kind of look like this because that would be how many are going to fit between there line it up and then these will be the cornerstones so they'll be set at all the corners how fun is that going to be? So these will all be pulling in um, the patterns, I think, and then the cornerstones are going to be some of the solids that I didn't use. So what I have to do is the math and see, um, I'll do the math and see if this material will be enough for the cornerstones. One. Um, and if not, they might be different colors. So we'll see, but I'm for sure going to do seminal piecing, I believe is what it's called on these with the patterns here and bring them in a little bit more. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really excited about it. Just envision this all the same background color. I just had to pull some different, <laughs> some different fabric in to make it work with the scraps that I had from cutting other things. So I'm excited. I think this will be really pretty between all of these. So I'm going to work on these and see how far I can get before next Wednesday. Okay, you guys. So over the last few days, I was able to sit and get all of these attached. It was kind of funny because I would just sit um, downstairs on the couch rather than up in my quilting room and work on them and was watching a um, series that I enjoy and it was quite funny because I had been working on these so long that the series on Amazon Prime was actually like the TV asked me if I was still going to continue watching because each new episode just kept loading and I was like oh my gosh I have literally been working on these much too long I guess but um they actually I think turned out really cute I'm really excited and it's fun to see when you actually get them set in place and all the stitches in place how well they come together so I got all 12 of them finished and I will say it did take a lot of work and I think I really need to learn how to use a thimble because my fingers kind of really got uh tore up <laughs> just um just a work hazard I guess we could say my um my son plays baseball in his, or he, well, yeah, he plays baseball. He enjoys baseball. And um, he has a coach that's been working with him. And my son's been getting blisters on his hand. And he keeps telling him that that means he's playing hard. And it's so, it's just one of those hazards that come with playing a sport. And I feel like, isn't that with a lot of things, like any type of crafting I've ever done, I've either, you know, if you're using a glue gun, get glue burns on you with sewing you get needle pricks and I feel like with just about anything you end up with little <laughs> little war wounds all right so there are all my my squares done so I'm going to be working through next Wednesday on showing you the sashing that I'm going to do so I'm just going to show the sashing that week and then the cornerstones will kind of be different because I'm really I'm trying to not make these videos too long because I like to be very long-winded sometimes so I'm trying to avoid that so next Wednesday we'll be working on the stashing the sashing and then the following the cornerstones that I'm going to do and um, we'll start bringing the quilt together and figuring out a border after that so you guys thanks so much for watching and until next time I hope you guys have a wonderful week bye